Justice is service. Food for Soul and Goa co-working present today's readings and reflection. September 19th, 2021. 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, Let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for, according to his own words, God will take care of him. The Word of the Lord. my life the Lord upholds my life the Lord upholds my life the Lord upholds my life O God by your name save me and by your might defend cause. O God, hear my prayer, hearken to the words of my mouth. The Lord upholds my life, the Lord upholds my life. For the haughty have risen up against me, The ruthless seek my life, they set not God before their eyes. The Lord upholds my life, the Lord upholds my life. Behold, God is my helper, the Lord sustains my life. Freely will I offer you sacrifice. I will praise your name, O Lord, for its goodness. The Lord upholds my life. The Lord upholds my life. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet, but do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but do not receive, because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. God has called us through the gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, The Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection on Today's Readings by Bob The readings could be summarized in the sentence, Justice is Service. In the first reading the wicked plot the persecution and death of the just one because his lifestyle is a challenge to their present focused, self-serving way of life. Aware how the unjust are plotting against him, the psalmist prays for help from, and relies completely on, God. In the second reading, James describes the difference between the selfishness and jealousy which lead to conflict and the wisdom and unselfishness which lead to true peace. In the Gospel, Jesus again predicts his own persecution and death at the hands of the unjust and he shows that true greatness comes not from honor and being served, but from humble service of others, especially the lowliest and the simplest. The Book of Wisdom describes how the wicked, those who selfishly seek their own pleasures at the cost of others, are so challenged by service of the just one that they want to remove him from their midst. This book took its final form about a century before Jesus. At the time the intellectually and religiously more sophisticated practitioners of the Jewish faith were often elitists. Their concern for their own well-off lifestyle was centered on their immediate positions of wealth and power. They could not see beyond the present moment and their privileged position. They believed that the here and now was all there was and that God was giving them the blessings they deserved now. They did not believe in an afterlife as such. When someone, the just one, came along and challenged them to fulfill the prescriptions of law dealing with caring for the anoyim, the poor and lowly, literally those bent over or those crushed, they were repulsed and angered both by his ideas and by his attitude. Thus they plotted against the just one who claimed that God would give rewards in the next life to those who cared for the anoyim. The wicked individual's thinking was that they wanted to see if the just one was willing to be committed to his belief in the rewards of the afterlife so much so that he would risk his own life at their hands. It is easy to see how Christians have linked the just one with Jesus. The psalm is a prayer of one who realizes that his enemies are plotting against him. This prayer fittingly could be linked with many of the prophets who were persecuted, with the just one of the first reading, and obviously with Jesus. The focus is not the threats and persecution from the enemies, but the total reliance on God. In the second reading, James addresses the conflict and divisions that existed among the Christians to whom he scripted his letter. Their lack of peace is a sign that they have not fully embraced the wisdom of God as presented to them through the preaching and ministry of the apostles, those sent to them. They are still caught up in the human condition of being selfish jealous, and seeking their own pleasures and ways. Even when they pray, they see it as begging God to met their own selfish needs rather than being concerned for others. If they truly understood the good news of Jesus, they would be thinking of others rather than themselves. When one's concern is centered on others, then one is pure, peaceable, gentle, compliant, and full of mercy and good fruits rather than being divisive and focused on one's own desires. 
In the Gospel, Jesus spends some private time with his closest disciples. He instructs them about the true role of being a leader. He, the master and teacher, will be rejected, persecuted, and put to death precisely because he is fulfilling the will of God and being of service to others. As they continue their journey, the disciples do not want to dwell on the morbid thought of Jesus' death and turn their human-based attention to their ranking as disciples of Jesus. Jesus challenges them on this very point, realizing they have missed the point that he has just made concerning the need to think of others rather than oneself. He brings into their midst a, pays, a word which can be translated either as child or servant, and says that they must receive, welcome or serve, those such as the pays if they want to be received, welcomed or served, by Jesus and by his Abba Father. As I reflect on the readings, I realize how much the gospel, good news, of Jesus is in direct contrast to our human, worldly ways. It is so natural to seek our own pleasures. We begin as infants, crying out when our immediate needs are not met. We want our parents to serve us and our desires. Some people carry this selfishness into adult life, spurred on by the advertisements with which we are constantly bombarded. Holding on to our self-centered, immediate gratification leads to jealousy, anger, hatred, division, not peace and justice. It becomes me and mine against the world, instead of working for the common good. Yet, every once in a while, we meet or hear about those who go beyond themselves and seek justice and the greater good of others. We are presented with persons such as Mother Teresa, Dorothy Day, Martin Luther King Jr., and Gandhi. These individuals were willing to give their all, for peace and justice. They realized that being just meant being willing to serve others and work for their rights. These individuals knew, both in mind and in action, that the true role of an important person and leader was to be of service to others. When one can think equally of another as one does of oneself, then one can reach out and minister to the other and work for their just and loving treatment. It demands lowering oneself to the lowest level and seeking to help raise up those who are crushed and bent over, annoy them. It can mean literally, or at least symbolically, dying to oneself and one's own pleasure. The more that one is willing to be like the just one, to serve others and work for justice for all, the more those who are in power or in privileged positions will be set against those seeking justice. For justice and peace are threats to those who selfishly control others. Jesus calls all of his disciples, not just the twelve in today's gospel, to be dedicated to service. Every follower of Jesus is to be a servant. The concept of service runs throughout Christian scripture. It is sometimes called ministry, diaconia, being a servant or slave, dulis, or a child, servant, pays. It demands thinking of others at least as equal to oneself if not trying to raise them above oneself. One of the key marks of a just person is understanding, standing under another and supporting and raising them up. It means acting with the wisdom which leads to purity, peace, gentleness, mercy, good fruits, constancy, and sincerity. If we seek to be true disciples of Jesus, we must learn from him, the master teacher, we must be willing to humble ourselves and be of service to others. We will seek to work for the just treatment of others and the lifting up of the anayim wherever we find them, in our own home, at work, in our society, in the world. It will mean dying, dying to our selfishness, and even dying for a just cause. Yet, with confidence, like the psalmist, we will be able to pray, Behold, God is my helper, the Lord sustains my life. The personal question, action for today. What person or persons comes to mind when I think of a true leader? What are some of her, his, their characteristics that makes him, her, them stand out in my mind? Do I see that true leaders are individuals who seek to help others? How do I demonstrate my own leadership in the way that I am willing to be of service to others? What aspects of my own self-centeredness keep me from being of service to those who need my assistance the most? Who will I pick out today, this week, as the persons to whom I will consciously reach out? Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all justice. 
Through your goodness we are invited to be disciples of your Son, Jesus. He calls us to share in his ministry of bringing your good news to others by serving them and lifting them up in love, justice, and peace. Because of selfish human nature, we have sometimes failed to be of service to others, seeking our own selfish desires rather than the good of others. For our lack of caring for others with justice, we seek your pardon and peace. Continue to fill us with the wisdom which comes from your Holy Spirit so that we can focus on others with purity, peace, gentleness, and mercy. Draw us into a closer relationship with Jesus and with you so that we can pray not selfishly and wrongly, but as true co-servants with Jesus. To you be all glory, honor and praise, together with your Son, Jesus, our brother and master teacher, and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God forever and ever. Amen. Presented by Father Frankie Fernandez OFM Capuchin Justice Peace Integrity Creation JPIC Capuchin Goa